In chapter 14, we learned how the genetic material in DNA was copied, but we haven't learned how the information is actually stored in there. So once we understood the structure of DNA, the next big question is how does that contribute to genetics? As we've seen, uh, we have traits and we know those are controlled by genes, but how is actually the information encoded is the next big question. So we're gonna look at the genetic code itself. Um, and we're gonna look at the kind of different languages that are used in here. Uh, we're gonna look at this process called transcription, which is the first step. It takes uh, DNA information, turns it into RNA. We'll look at that process in prokaryotes, and then we'll look briefly at how it works in eukaryotes, although that is much more complicated. Um, there are more layers added on top of it. So we're gonna keep that surface level a cell biology course or later a molecular genetics courses uh, will teach you much more about that process. Then we're gonna look at how RNA gets processed in eukaryotes. Again, this is part of this um, step here that is not found in prokaryotes. And then we will look at this process called translation, which involves ribosomes and they are going to actually synthesize the proteins. Okay, so the genetic code, how is the information stored? Well, to examine this, we first need to talk about what we call the central dogma of molecular biology. Um, and this is gonna involve three different kind of molecular languages here. We're gonna have the DNA language, where we have the A, T, G, and C letters. We're gonna have the RNA language, where we have A, U, G, and C, slightly different nucleotides there. And then we have the protein language, which is amino acids. And here you can see the 20 different amino acids. Of course, I'm not going to ask you to memorize these, um, but I show you these to let you know that there's a vastly different array of amino acids there. You have everything from this tiny little amino acid like glycine that just basically is a hydrogen ion on there up to giant chonkers like tryptophan here, which have two large rings attached to them. They're all going to have different properties and they're going to lend themselves to protein structure in a different way. In later courses, if you take something like 400 level biochemistry, you may be asked to memorize these, but for this course, don't worry, I'm not that evil. Okay, so let's cut to the chase here. DNA has the information needed to direct all cell functions to some extent. Um, there are caveats to this that we're learning more and more, but encoded in the DNA are all of the genes. So we have this idea of how do we get the information out? And that is what we call the central dogma of molecular biology. That is the DNA encodes information in the form of genes. Remember we said a gene is any region of DNA that codes for a transcript in RNA. Well, the first part of the central dogma is that DNA is going to get transcribed into RNA. Okay, that RNA, we're gonna focus on protein coding genes will then be mRNA and will be translated into a protein sequence. Like I said, there are non-coding genes that don't code for proteins. We're not gonna focus on those right now. I will mention them briefly in passing, but we're gonna focus on the protein coding genes at the moment. So gene expression is the process of synthesizing a specific protein with a specific amino acid sequence. Please note, if I say AA, that means amino acid. That doesn't mean anything else that might be abbreviated AA. Uh, so gene expression is synthesis of a specific protein with a specific amino acid sequence that is encoded in a gene. Okay, how do we do that? Well, transcription is taking the DNA and converting that into an RNA copy uh, for protein coding genes, that's mRNA. Then translation is the process of taking that mRNA and building an amino acid chain out of that. That chain of amino acids will then fold, as we've talked about previously, into a full working protein and it will go off and do its own thing. Now, uh, this is the way that the process works um, and the direction that it works for uh, living organisms. There is a side process called reverse transcription where RNA can get converted back into DNA. We mainly see that in viral contexts um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk briefly about that in um, uh, a later chapter. But there is a hypothesis that uh, early genetic information was stored primarily in RNA. And RNA is really flexible. As we've seen, it can fold on itself. 
it can actually catalyze some reactions. So the early thought is that uh, very, very early on, we had this RNA world where RNA was the genetic material. It could do some functions, but then we have since specified into generating proteins, which can have more complex catalytic roles and DNA evolved as the storage material because as we've seen dna is double stranded you have information stored on both sides it's got a backup copy it's a really stable molecule so this is the way the system currently has evolved so as we've seen prokaryotes do things in a nice simple way that's not to say it's not elegant in its simplicity but it tends to have less components to it that's really good prokaryotes are the most successful organisms on the planet if it ain't broke don't fix it Eukaryotes, on the other hand, tend to have evolved more uh, layers of complexity onto these processes. Uh, transcription and translation will be no exception to that. There's a couple of differences in here, but most of the process is the same. We're going to look at this process and we're going to mainly see that the location that this occurs in is different. If you think about prokaryotes, they don't have a nucleus, so they don't have to deal with that. In eukaryotes, transcription the process of making rna from the dna is going to occur in the nucleus and we're going to have processing of rnas so splicing them up adding little bits to them that that is something that eukaryotes do that prokaryotes don't and then they're going to move out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and that is where translation is going to occur uh, as we've talked about a little bit previously prokaryotes they can do transcription and translation at the same time so they can move much, much faster in their life cycle. Okay, we're gonna look at an animation that is an overview of this process of the central dogma. Here is a cell, the basic unit of all living tissue. In most human cells, there is a structure called the nucleus. The nucleus contains the genome. In humans, the genome is split between 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each chromosome contains a long strand of DNA, tightly packaged around proteins called histones. Within the DNA are sections called genes. These genes contain the instructions for making proteins. When a gene is switched on, an enzyme called RNA polymerase attaches to the start of the gene. It moves along the DNA, making a strand of messenger RNA out of free bases in the nucleus. The DNA code determines the order in which the free bases are added to the messenger RNA. This process is called transcription. Before the messenger RNA can be used as a template for the production of proteins, it needs to be processed. This involves removing and adding sections of RNA. The messenger RNA then moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Protein factories in the cytoplasm, called ribosomes, bind to the messenger RNA. The ribosome reads the code in the messenger RNA to produce a chain made up of amino acids. There are 20 different types of amino acid. Transfer RNA molecules carry the amino acids to the ribosome. The messenger RNA is read three bases at a time. As each triplet is read, a transfer RNA delivers the corresponding amino acid. This is added to a growing chain of amino acids. Once the last amino acid has been added, the chain folds into a complex 3D shape to form the protein. All right, so that animation gives us a very nice overview of the processes that we're going to be talking about. Uh, this is super powerful, right? This is understanding how genetic information is encoded in an organism. And this is like part of the holy grail, right? Figuring out how we work. Now, the interesting thing is, is that we still don't fully understand this. There is still more to learn. So I'm showing you the basics, 
But as we continue going on, there is more and more that we're learning. And in 10 years time, I'm sure I will be adding more pieces to this puzzle. We're still figuring out how this process is controlled. That's really what we still don't understand yet. Okay, so let's review here. Which process converts the information in DNA into RNA? What's the name of that process? Go ahead and pause the video and think about this. All right, that process would be called transcription. So transcription takes DNA and makes an RNA copy out of that. Okay, there are going to be several tra words in here. Translation, transcription. Uh, we will talk a bit about transposition in a later section, um, but make sure you know the pieces of the central dogma. So we have DNA, RNA, protein, transcription does the first, translation does the second. All right, so our central dogma of molecular biology, we're converting DNA into RNA. Now, there are caveats to this. There are several different types of RNA. mRNA will convert into protein. So transcription is the process of converting DNA into RNA. There are many types of RNA. We'll talk about tRNAs, rRNAs, um, short non-coding RNAs. But mRNA is what gets converted into a protein. We call this process gene expression, synthesis of a specific protein using the information encoded in a gene. Now, remember, we have a slightly different definition of a gene in this course. A gene is any region of DNA that codes for an RNA. Um, that'll be important as we continue talking about gene expression. Um, we have rRNA, tRNA, and those short known coding RNAs that are also expressed. But we're going to focus right now on the protein coding genes. But just know that there's more to this than just genes that code for proteins. Okay, so eukaryotic gene expression, it's more complex than prokaryotic gene expression because we got to deal with the nucleus. That's our primary barrier that causes some issues. Then we have this process of RNA processing. There will be more explicit details in there as well. Uh, we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. All right, that's it for our overview. We'll get into prokaryotic transcription in the next video.